Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 30, where we're going to look at drawing two-dimensional vectors. Now, you may have noticed that we have not used our protractor yet. The protractor was one of the pieces of equipment we needed for the vector section, but we didn't use it for drawing one-dimensional vectors. And that's because one-dimensional vectors go along an axis. There's no angle from which you can measure. They're all at 0 or 90 degrees. And if you set your coordinate system to be a certain direction, all you have to do is draw your arrow in that direction. So it doesn't really require the protractor. So how are two-dimensional vectors different? Well, two-dimensional vectors can be drawn anywhere on a coordinate axis. Typically, we're going to have one of two coordinate axes. It'll be the XY coordinate system or the North, South, East, West coordinate system. And what you can do is draw your vector anywhere between 0 and 360 degrees for X and Y, or any quadrant in the north, south, east, west directions, um, perhaps 20 degrees north of east, 70 degrees west of south, 14 degrees north of south, or possibly 15 degrees east of south. All of these different directions will be drawn from a coordinate axis. And what you need to do is now use your protractor in order to draw them. So two-dimensional vectors will require a few extra steps in order to draw them. And once you use those steps, you'll be able to represent a vector that points in any direction from 0 to 360 degrees on an XY coordinate system or that points in any direction on a map. Now what we're going to do is add, like I said, a few more steps to our procedure. Now first thing you'll want to do is draw, name your vector. Uh, typically problems will have vectors named for you, maybe vector A and B, maybe vector V1 and V2, maybe vector X and Y, although that's less common, um, but you're going to have to name that vector. Then you're going to have to set up a scale. The scale should also be appropriate to fill up your page. But remember you're going to be pointing your vector in different directions. You may not always want to start at the center of your page. If a vector is really long and points up to the right, you're going to want to start your vector down to the left of the piece of paper. You want to fill up your page so that you minimize any errors that you make. After you do that, you're going to set up a coordinate axis. And what I typically do is I'll draw X, Y, or North, South, East, West, just so I remember what axis I'm using. If it's 0 to 360 on the problem, I'm going to use XY. If it has the letters north, south, east, or west in the problem, I'm going to use the compass system. That being said, I'm then going to first draw my reference axis. And what's important now is if I want everything to be accurate and to scale, I'm going to want to make sure that my axis is actually perpendicular in the X and Y directions. So I'm going to draw my first line, possibly east to west, or the X axis. And then what I'm going to do is use my protractor to measure 90 degrees. And once I measure the 90 degrees, then I'm going to draw my other set of the axis, my other axis line. At that point, I'm then going to put a dot at the beginning of the center of the axis, typically the origin. I will then use my protractor. If I'm going between 0 and 180, I'm going to hold my protractor flat along the axis, um, along the x-axis. If I'm going to go from uh, 181, perhaps, to 360, I'm going to flip my protractor upside down and have it so that it's along the x-axis, but it, but it curves downward. I typically call it frown or smile. So 0 to 180 looks like a frown, and um, 181 to 360 looks like the protractor is smiling at you. When you measure the angles, make sure you hold your protractor so you can read the numbers so that they're not reversed in mirror image. So make sure you hold your protractor so you can see the numbers clearly. Then what you're going to do is put a line, um, a little dot, at the angle you want to measure it. And that way you'll have two points to measure your straight line. You'll have the origin, and then you'll have the point at the angle you want to measure. Then what you'll do is draw a line with your ruler to the proper number of centimeters. You had your scale to fill up your page. Now you're going to draw the line to scale, representing the direction that you have. Once the line is drawn, you're going to draw an arrowhead at the end of the line. Make sure that the tip of the arrowhead goes at the end of the line, not the beginning of the arrowhead. So you want to make sure that the line is the proper length. After that, you're going to label it. In this case, we're now using both of our tools, both of our pieces of equipment, in order to solve for drawing the vectors. And two-dimensional vectors are 
um, a little more complex than one dimensional, but the possibilities are endless. So it gives for a more interesting problem. If all of our problems are just east, west, or north, south, it wouldn't really represent objects in the real world. Objects in the real world move at strange angles. They change directions and they move anywhere along a map. So it's important for us to remember that as we add the complexity, we're doing that in order to solve real world problems, not just problems where you're on a train track going left and right. Often objects don't just do that. We don't have objects travel along train tracks unless they're trains. So it gives us the ability to solve problems that are um, any complexity in any direction in any real world scenario that we can be faced with. Now at this point we'll do a sample problem of drawing vectors um, together. I'll ask you to draw a few vectors on your own and then I'll do those vector problems together with you to try to um, see if you did them correctly. Once again, the more you practice this, the better you're going to be able to solve problems in the future. So make sure you rinse and repeat and practice as many times as you need in order for you to understand this concept. Let's get on to some problems. Well, now we're going to look at two-dimensional vectors and we've talked about the fact that you need to have a reference axis in order to do this. So our lonely protractor is going to finally get the call and be part of the process here. Now for the first one we're going to look at 200 meters at 60 degrees and the problem will often determine which coordinate system we're going to use. If it has north, south, east, or west in it, we'll use the uh, compass. And if it doesn't, we'll stick to the x, y coordinate system. So in this case, we're going to use x and y. And hopefully you realize that 60 degrees is quadrant 1. And what we'll do is we'll measure up in this area, somewhere around here, um, to represent the 60 degrees. But first you need to have your scale. 1 centimeter equals... I'm going to do 20 meters. That'll give us a 10 centimeter line. But the new aspect of this is that we have to draw a reference axis first. And what we can do is just draw a line with our ruler to start. And then if we make a dot where the origin will be, we'll line up our protractor and measure up to 60 degrees. I'm going to try to do that here without messing it up. Whoop. The other problem is you're probably going to need for future problems a um, vertical axis as well. Now the 60 degrees measured up is fine because we're in quadrant one. But what if we were measuring, measuring with respect to maybe the north or south line for the north, south, east, west, or possibly the... Um, 90 or 270 degree axis. What you're going to need to do is draw the vertical line. And what you do in order to do that is you'll line up your protractor and measure 90. And if you have your origin here, you can connect the dots between them. And if you do that, that should be a 90 degree angle. Now you can verify it. I'm going to measure down here and see if I'm, I match 90. Well, I don't know if I match 90 because the line's not long enough. So I'm just going to make a dot and see if I can connect the dot. If I were to draw that line, it would connect through that dot. Now, the problem I'm having with this marker is the fact that it's fairly thick. What I would suggest you do is use a thin pencil. I would definitely suggest a pencil for vectors. Any assessment that you take, if you're going to draw a diagram or a graph or draw vectors, you can, you can use pencil. Um, for many other parts, they want you to use pen to make sure that it's your own work and no one's uh, changing the answers. However, for diagrams, pencil is still the way to go. It's very easy to make a mistake, um, and a pencil can be easily fixed. Now, even in this spot, I you know redrew over my 90-degree line. Um, because the ruler slipped with a pencil, if that was a bad, you know, problem, we could we could eliminate that issue. 
Now, if I'm going to then draw my 60 degree angle, I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to measure up to the line I already made the dot for. And I'm going to draw the line to the end of the ruler, 10 centimeters long, make my arrow, and label it. I don't remember if we even had a name. So I'm going to call it vector A, revisionist history, and I'll label it vector A. So the new part is that you need to draw a reference axis first. I think it's easiest if you just get into the habit of drawing both axes, even if you're using quadrant one um, or quadrant, you know, quadrant three or four, if you have that angle. So just get used to drawing a full axis, and I think that it, you can then handle any problem that you're faced with. So there's our sample problem of 200 meters at 60 degrees. All right, a couple of vector problems um, with two-dimensional vectors. So we have vector A, which is going to be 15 newtons southwest. Well, if it says southwest, we're going to use the north, south, east, west coordinate system. I'm going to do one to one. And one of the tricky parts with newtons is it has an N in it, if you simplify it from the full word. And that could be uh, mistaken for north. So just be aware of if you have the units versus the um, direction. Now that being said, I'm going to go in the southwest direction, so quadrant three. So just because I want to make sure I have enough room, I'm going to actually draw my reference axis up here. Now the first line you just draw, but then you bring your protractor in. And let's make an origin in the center. Measure 90 degrees, put a dot, and then that will allow us to draw. And I don't need to have a huge um, axis, but you want to make sure that you draw your axis a little bit above and a little bit below. If we were to measure this angle here, 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 or here, it should be 90 degrees. Now, southwest has a specific angle, and it represents 45. So what I'm going to do is line up my original protractor. I'm going to do it smiley face. I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 45 degrees here. I'm going to make a dot, and then I'm going to draw a line that happens to be 15 centimeters. Now, I'm hampered by the fact that I'm using a 6-inch ruler, so I can only go to certain distances with my protractor. I mean, sorry, with my ruler, um, so that I don't have to do a second line. But if you have, let's say, a meter stick, you're doing a big problem on the board, you're going to want to use as much room as possible. Now, that would represent 45 degrees um, from the south to the west or from the west to the south. And the beauty is, since we're dealing with 45, that's a complement. So it doesn't matter if you hold your protractor along the west axis and go south or along the south axis and go west um, you should get the same answer so it should be 45 either way and that would be the um, answer for uh, vector a now if we switch over to vector b vector b was a hundred meters per second at 300 degrees so b 100 meters per second at 300 degrees. Now 300 degrees is going to be quadrant 4 of the XY coordinate system. And to keep it within my my ruler that I have, one centimeter, I'm going to go 10 meters per second. It'll be a 10 centimeter line. And then whoop, I'm going to throw my ruler across the board. But then since I know I'm going in quadrant 4, I'll draw my axis over here. And I'll put a dot. I'll measure 90. I'm going to measure 90. Put a dot at 90. And then draw my vertical axis. And for some reason, I always do the x-axis first. I guess that's just habit. You could do the, the vertical axis, uh, the y-axis first, and then measure the 90 degrees from that if you, if you cared to. Now, the problem with this is that I am dealing with 300. I'm going to go 60 less, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, from uh, the 360 degree angle. 
but you could also hold it like this, belly style if you will, and you should be able to measure 30 degrees, um, 10, 20, 30 from 270. Either way, this dot represents um, <clears throat> the direction that we need. Now if I put my ruler here, I'm going to line up zero and draw a 10 centimeter line. I'm going to label it B, and that would be vector B. Drawing single vectors uh, gets tedious after a while. You're really not achieving any major goal, and that's why we're going to be talking about drawing vectors, uh, multiple vectors, on a single problem shortly. Now, just as our final example, we have vector C, which is 500 uh, miles per hour at 30 degrees north of west. So I'm going to be in quadrant 2. Now 500, um, well first of all it's north, south, east, west. Second of all I'm going to do 1 centimeter is 50 miles per hour because that's the constraint of my ruler. And then if I'm going to go in quadrant 2 I'll start down in this area. I'll draw a single line. I'll put a dot and I'll measure 90. And if I measure 90, I'll put a dot on the 90, use my ruler, and then draw the axis. Now that should be perpendicular in all these quadrants there. And what I'll do is I need to measure 30 degrees north of west. So if we remember back to when we were measuring angles we hold it along the second word which is west and we go up 10 20 30 degrees to that that is different than 30 degrees west of north now if i hold the protractor i'm sorry the ruler at the origin and line it up with the dot i'm going to go 10 centimeters back to the origin and draw my arrowhead at the end of the line label it C, and we'll see you for the next practice problem.